In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the RAM 234-6 Tough Tray 2. It's a smaller version of the existing RAM Tough Tray that's available for laptops. Uh, but the smaller one is really designed more for the netbook range, uh, mini laptops, and even DVD players. What you see in front of you here is the parts that come with the unit when you purchase it. You have the Tough Tray 2 uh, with its T-frame section that slides in and out the side here. You can see you have the uh, clamping arms, you have these smaller spring-loaded ones here, and the larger spring-loaded ones, then you have just the flat ones, smaller and large as well. You have these rubber caps which actually go on the ends of these spring arms. You have the metal clips that go on the top of the uh, flat arms. You have hardware for mounting the side arms and also a ball which I'll explain later. And you have two springs that go into making this T-frame uh, expand and contract and one spring screw. So the first step of assembling the Tough Tray 2 is you've got to take the springs that came with the device and drop them in. You see in the center slot right here, there's a little hole. You can drop one string in there. I'm actually going to drop two. You have the choice of dropping one or two depending on how wide you want the tray to open up once it's finished. In this case, um, you flip it over, you can see there's two springs lying in here. So if you only put one, uh, it, it'll open wider than if you have two. Because the way it works is the springs are going to be wedged in here and as you widen this tray, the springs are going to be compressed together. So obviously if you have less springs, you can actually stretch it wider. So you can use uh, maybe one spring for something wider, like if you want to hold a, a keyboard or some other device. But the device I'm going to use, I'm, I'm going to use the two springs. So now you've got the springs in place here, what you do is take the one screw that came with the flat head, so it's just the one of the hardware, and what I like to do is I just basically screw it in here, just a couple of turns, just to get it in there so it's not touching the spring, but it's just held in there in place to get the uh, ball rolling. Now, you've got a choice. In the past, I've, I've always used like uh, two, two screwdrivers, drop one in there, you can actually push the spring back, and then you can either tighten it there, or another way to do it is get some of the existing hardware just as a temporary thing and drop it in there to lock the spring in place. So now the spring's being held back in here in that little hole. I can tighten up that screw. So either way you want to do it, it doesn't really matter. The idea is basically what you're trying to do is, is block the spring in here without crushing it. So I've done that, just need to pull out this spring. Probably need to screw it out now. Here we go, I hit the spring click. There we go. Springs installed inside of the tray. Very easy. The next step in assembling the tough tray is we need to find out how deep we need to make these sidearms. So what I'm going to do is place my DVD player on the side of this tray here. As you can see, I'm going to take the sidearms that are available or included with the purchase of the tough tray and just go through one by one to see which one is the best size for the device I'm mounting. So what we have here is, you can see the height of the top of the tray. What I've got here is the four sidearm clamps that are available. And what I'm going to do is just test each one to see how the height works. Because what you've got to do is, is the bolts and screw, the, sorry, the screw and nut is going to go through this slot here and through the slot here of the tray. So with that in mind, I've got to work out what sort of height's best. That one there's not too bad, but maybe a bit small. Um, with these spring arms, which by spring I mean the fact that the plastic actually has some give to it. So when you put it on, as the tray clamps close, these, uh, these little arms will have a bit of give to them, so they're a bit more spring loaded. That one there would probably work, oops, would probably work because it doesn't have to go over the top of the device, it can just has to clamp it because once you have one, two on this side and two on the other side, it will clamp quite well. So that one's not too bad. Um, then there's this one here, which again, quite large, so for a thick device, which I don't need. And then, but what I'm actually going to install is the flat one, the larger of the flat ones. But that seems to come off quite well. So with the flat side arms, what you need to do is install or slide into the top groove here, these little metal, uh, holders. Now this is this is an optional step but the idea of this is just so you can actually once it slides in you can actually click over the top oops I'll slide that back in you can actually slide over the top of your device and some laptops even you can once it's actually sitting right on top of the device it can close 
uh, letting you not have to remove it from the tray to keep the lid closer open. But the way this works is you slide it into this groove and then give it enough push so that it actually just goes over that little notch that's inside of that. Whoops, I'll show you here. So you do it this way. It goes over the top, that notch, and there it is, clipped in. So now you can see there's a little notch in there that the hole of the metal will sit in, and there you have it. It's already clipped in. So I've actually done that with the other four. So the next step will be to attach those directly onto the side, this side and the back side. The next thing you want to do with your tough tray two is work out where you're going to put your side support arms. What I've got here is I've put my device back in on top of the tray. But what I can do is I've got to work out where to put my arms so that I'm really trying to avoid blocking that on our switch. So what I'll do is I'll drop one arm here and I pretty much line up with that fourth groove, which is that one there, so that it's not blocking my on-off switch. And then with the second one, I'll just drop it over probably that second one in. So once I've worked out my location, I just take the existing hardware and I can attach these on this side. And I'll do the same on the other side, making sure the ports I want uh, available to me when in the tray, uh, I can get to without the side support arms blocking it. So now I have the tray set up ready for uh, my device. What I can do is just drop it in here, push one side in there, pull the spring out, and drop the back side in. And there we go. I've now I've got the support arms giving me access to the on-off switch here. I've also got my power, headphones and volume switches all available to me. One of the things you can do with existing uh, parts that came with the device or the leftover parts is if you feel you need to add some front support and back you can actually bolt these in here with some hardware uh, either way and put them in the front and back just to avoid any sliding uh, out of the device generally you don't need it in, in sort of DVD applications or whatever but say you're holding the device up like that as a tablet uh, in this case I can actually spin this DVD player around and drop it down and it's sort of a flat device now but if I wanted to add a bit more support I could just put some support at the top or back, whichever way I want to hold it up, uh, in this case like that. And it would give me a little bit extra support uh, the, uh, holding the my device in. The other thing I want to show you finally is the back of the device, or the bottom, is the mounting plate holes. What you can do there is, is mount any of the RAM mount systems, uh, either using that amps hole pattern, which are the four holes here, uh, on one of these round plates, be it a C-size ball there, or the RAM B size ball, which is the one inch or one and a half inch, or you can use the uh, Visa plate, which is a 75 mil Visa plate. It just hold, goes straight over those holes. You've got existing hardware to mount those, so that's how you can mount this to any of their uh, endless number of mounting systems. You can go online and see the tray and many of the mounting options we've supplied, or you can actually take the tray and add on the parts you need and build pretty much your own tray for whatever de uh, application you desire. So there you have it, the RAM 234-6 Tough Tray 2.